one right now. I mean, I'm in a good area. I'm just kind of stuck in this traffic for. I've been here like an hour, so I probably won't get out of this for another hour. So where, like where, where are yeah. you? In New Jersey. Oh, God damn, bro. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, you, you can have all that shit up there, man. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. Ooh, I got another one coming. AC Mogul in the building. AC the hey. Mogul. AC. <laughs> so uh, for everybody that don't know, AC has uh has been a friend of the channel for quite a while. Um I uh I got her on uh, a couple of years ago when she started her journey. I came across her uh YouTube page and she started her journey into into trucking. Uh then uh we came back together because of the peppermint patties <laughs> trainer. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, came back together for that, I but uh, about that. Uh, we we also came back together because we uh, talked about uh, celib celibacy and everything, and now here oh, we yeah. and now here we are again, uh, back together again. To, it's it, you 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 leveled up, but um, but you 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 leveled up at a price. So, um, so AC, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, give you the floor, uh, reintroduce yourself to everybody and, uh, tell your story. What up? I'm AC the Mogul. Um, that's Adrian Sherell. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure y'all subscribe and like, come on over to my channel. We definitely family over here. Um, about myself. Yeah, I'm still trucking. I'm a truck driver. I started out my journey with Crime Inc. Um, that's where I got my CDO through, and then they hired me the same day. I was there almost three years. It would have been three years in January. Um, but yeah, it was just time to move forward. So why? So you came. Uh, you 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 came back three years. Uh, with Prime. Um, you stuck it. You you stuck it out. You 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 changed up your lifestyle. You um you 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 was on a truck for a while. Um now you you came, you told Prime, you said, Hey, I'm thinking about leveling up and and Prime just kinda told you to kinda told you, okay, well, let's bring us our truck back in um Bye. That that that's yeah. how I, that that's Pretty how I went down. So somewhat. All right. So let so let's get into it. Um, I'm gonna tell you what really what really um was kind of like the the straw that broke the camel's back for me. Like I said, Prime is a pretty good company for you to start out with and stuff like that. But over the long haul, um, to be living on the truck as a lease driver. It was a little bit taxing financially and then emotionally. So I was already tired. But was, what was also like the last straw for me was they don't have the inward facing cameras, but they have the outward facing cameras. And every time you hit a hard break or every time, you know, you could be in city traffic or something, any, any traffic in any city. And if you, if you get in like hard breaks or somebody's following you or you following too close to somebody, it's like they, they call you constantly and ask you, hold on. Sorry, I'm in my truck right now. They call you and ask you constantly, um, you know, Hey, I just seen you had a hard break. I've seen, uh, you know, is everything okay? And it was it got annoying. It got to the point where they would call me sometimes three times a day, every day. And it was kind of just annoying. So I would be having a little bit of an attitude with my dispatcher when he called, you know. So I think that's really what the final, that was like the final of it. Like it, it got to the point where they were like, okay, um, we're going to have you take a safety class. I never had any accidents. I never had any tickets. I never got pulled over for nothing. I never got no speeding or nothing like that. But in Colorado or on the way out to Colorado, if the speed limit out there is like 85. So, you know, they, they truck cut off at 65. So if I'm going down a mountain 
and my truck is going 70, 75, I let that bitch rock. I just let it drive. I just let it go. You want down a hill? I just let it go because it's feeling at 85. So if I'm doing 75, I'm like, all right, whatever. I'm going down a hill. Well, they will call me like, oh, you're speeding. And I'm like, dude, I'm not speeding. I'm going down a hill and I'm about to go right back up to another hill. So why would I break? <laughs> why would I waste my gas, break, and come back up? Like, if I'm going down a hill, I'm about to go up another hill. What, what sense do it make to break? No, I'm going to go down a hill and let the momentum carry me up <laughs> until I have to push the gas again. However, um, it was like stuff like that, little petty stuff. They would call me and keep saying, hey, you know. So it got to the point where they were like, um, do the safety class. So I did the safety class. And then afterwards, I was um, on my own personal time. And they were like, oh, you still got a, you got another hard break after you did the safety class. or you were speeding after you did the safety class. And like I said, technically it's not speeding. But if you're going over 65 miles per hour in their truck, they consider it speeding, even though you're not breaking the legal law. So um, the last and final time my dispatcher called me and he said, you know, I'm really, I'm really um, concerned because you just took the safety class and you're, and you're still having the same issue. Um, I'm concerned about your ability to move freight with pride. I said, okay, well, I'll start looking for another position. And he was like, uh, it, that startled him. He didn't expect me to say that. It was like he kind of started to fumble over his words, like, uh, what, uh, like, well, uh. <laughs> and then he was like, uh, you know, well, you know, you're going to have, you're going to have rules to follow, follow no matter where you go. And I said, okay, I'll begin looking for another position. If you're concerned about my ability to operate straight with crime, I'll move forward and look for another position. So then that was it. That was the end of that conversation. He said, um, okay, well, that's not what I was, you know, getting at. And I said, I understand. I said, how about this? I'll do the best I can. And I left it at that. He said, okay. About an hour later, he calls me back, like, you could just drop the truck off. And he tried to explain. But before he could get any other words out, I just said, okay. And then he was like, well, and he kept trying to explain, like, why he came to the, he's like, I, I talked to the safe, I called the safety department and, and he was like, you could just drop the truck off. So basically what he was trying to tell me is he called the safety department to, to tell on me to, so that they can come to an agreement to get me to drop the truck off because he knew I was looking for another place of employment. So, yeah, that, it was pretty much, that was like the friction of it. So, like I said, I could have dealt with it, but the gist of it was I was tired of it. Like, I was tired of the sacrifice. Like I said, the sacrifice of living on a road, not being with my son not being around family. It's like you just, I just closed myself in on this truck. So all of the other personal things that I listed in my video about that job, uh, about the sacrifices of being like a woman on the road, OTR, um, I didn't even get into the financial aspect of it yet. But what I didn't share is what I just shared with you. So um, they would call you and the whole speed and thing. So it was just like, it was time. It was, I was already tired. But those, every time those calls, like, I don't need you to call me 20 times, 15 times. I'm exaggerating, but I don't need you to keep calling me every day. Obviously, if I got a hard break, guess what? Nobody got an accident, right? Because I break. So why are you calling me? If I was speeding, I would get a ticket. Why are you calling me? So it just got to the point where it was frustrating for me. And that's, it was just time for me to part ways. Wow. Micromanage. <laughs> At the fullest, this thing, man. Like, wow, mm -hmm. I, you're you're, but you're a lease driver. I mean, you was you was being yeah. that you was being that micro that much micromanaged even as a lease driver there. Yeah. Now my first lease, I didn't. I don't know if they maybe forgot to put a sensor in on my last truck because I had two trucks with them. The first truck I completed the lease. Um, I took over somebody else's, so it was like a year and a half lease on it left. I completed that one. I never got a call about a heartbreak or nothing. So that's why I said, I, I wondered if they put it in the in the next truck that I had, because that next truck I got, it was like they kept calling me, calling me every time, anything, even when I wasn't heartbreaking. Obviously, I'm preventing an accident. Following too close sometimes. Hey, you're in New York City traffic. What do you want me to do? So it's like, it got to the point, like I said, it was just exhausting, like, stop, like, you're, you're, and then they would call, their calls would be delayed. So something could have happened 20 minutes ago, 30 minutes ago, and I'm in a whole different part, and I'm, you know, in another part of traffic, and you're like, 
did you get did you uh did you get a hard break uh sometime like twenty minutes ago and I'm like, What? Like I'm in the middle of trying to drive and I'm to me. I r <laughs> I can't even really remember how many times I had to break since the last time I had to break hard. <laughs> like it was just annoying. Like it was yeah, it was definitely annoying. Yeah, I, I I think that will that will bother me too. I mean, I had I, I I drove for companies that uh you know that would you know call me or put something in the Qualcomm and say, hey, you know, uh, be careful, you know, the speed limit sixty five, you doing sixty seven or or you know, yeah. be careful, you know, you you hard break yeah. a couple of times, and I'm like. I mean, That's this is part of speeding, right. I mean, it's part <laughs> of driving. I mean, you know, I'm, yeah. you know, I, like you said, I'm down in Texas. The speed limit is 85, bro. Like, I mean, if you know, mm. I know the truck is governed at 65, but if you going down an incline or something like that, you're not, exactly. you're not, you're not speeding. I mean, you got to control the speed exactly. or whatever, but you're not. You're not you're you're legally not breaking the speed limit. I mean, you you can't say. That I'm speeding if the speed limit is 70, 75 plus and your truck is governed yep. at uh at 65. Now I can only now to be honest, I could say on my truck, the only irritating thing that I got on my truck is that if I go past 70, my 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 truck itself would doo doo, doo doo, doo doo. Yeah. But it don't it don't oh, yeah, yeah. it don't it don't bother me because it's part of the truck and I don't have no right. I, I don't have no sensors to indicate that you know that the fleet manager will call me back and be like hey you know you're speeding hey you know you're speeding hey you know you're speeding every time right exactly so with all it, it, so with all that within the three years man you you they they sent you to a safety class what how, what what's that about. They just want it. They want you to take a safety class to make sure. I feel like it's one of those things where they're trying to use as a disciplinary uh, action. They want you to take a safety class so that you can think about how you drive and so you don't have to go sit down. Because they know if you go, if they put you on a safety class, you have to sit down. You have to take a day off. You get what I'm saying? You have to take a day off and miss out on some money. So I think it's more so like, okay, you want to keep doing it? Don't miss out on the day for some money then and, and take this safety class for a few hours. Or, you know, nobody wants to go sit in a class for a few hours and listen to some dumb safety videos that's made in probably 1950. Like, so I think they use it as a form of like punishment, kind of like to, and to get you to like um, cooperate with the way they want you to do things. So I took the safety class, fine. But that's not going to change the way I'm driving because I don't see nothing wrong with the way I'm driving. So what happened? I went right back out and drove the way I continued to drive. And then he called me with, the, hey, I see you had another heartbreak or you were speeding again and you just had the safety class. I said, okay. And he, that's what happened. He just was, so, he gave me the rundown about how, yeah. So after all of that, he, is this the same fleet manager that you had? Dispatcher dispatcher that you yep. had since uh you know for the duration of the three years or was he like a new guy or whatever where, where, where who, no, who was I this guy him. yeah i got him after um i don't want to put his name out here but it starts with a t r <laughs> okay. But I got him after we'll, we'll just call um, him we'll call him triple H <laughs> for right now. <laughs> triple. Yeah, we call him triple. He he he's been there for I guess nine years, but you know I I just think that over the course of time, you know, they, they don't sometimes you get along with people and sometimes you don't. And I had the inkling to get a different fleet manager. But I just never went for it because I was like, you know what? At once, I'm like, he kind of knows me a little bit, so he knows he don't do unnecessary calling. Like he does, he usually just texts me on Qualcomm and that's it. He knows I don't like to be called. Don't be calling me all day. But what the only thing that we would differ about is, like I said, the back to the calling every time. Um, they're like micromanaging the way that I drive. 
outside of that, he wouldn't call me. He doesn't, he didn't bother me. So it was like, all right, he kind of knows how I like to work. He knows how I like to run. So I just kind of, I just kind of stuck with it, even though my intuition said, get another fleet manager. Cause I could just sense that things were. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, this is, excuse me, a damn fine cup of coffee. I've had, I can't tell you how many cups of coffee in my life, and this, this is one of the best. Becoming intense between us. A couple times things got intense between us. So I think it really boiled down to the relationship that I had with the dispatcher, regardless if he liked me or not. That was kind of his way of, well, I can't control her, and she wants to do what she wants to do, so let me just try to get rid of her before she tries to leave us. Like, that's, I think it was more so his ego. That's how it always then, worked. I, I, that's how it always yeah. worked. I always, I always said, didn't I? Don't, don't I say this, y'all? Y'all don't, y'all, y'all don't be paying attention to nothing. But I be saying, y'all, y'all, y'all think that I, y'all think I be talking out the side of my neck. I always say, your relationship with your dispatcher, fleet manager, or whoever, uh, whoever you know gets you the loads and that you work with, it always boils down to the relationship. And if it's not good then your time mm -hmm. with the company is not going to be all that high. But you manage mm -hmm. you 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 I'm managed uh 3 years uh but of course throughout the 3 years I mean you know you was going through your own uh personal turmoil. Uh you said that uh mm -hmm. you know in in the video, you know guys definitely go over there and check out the video. Uh but in the video you did is you know you kind of mentioned the fact that you uh you 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 couldn't you you couldn't handle it no more like you know you yeah, you stopped I, going out you stopped going outside you stopped exercising it, it was like the depression was getting it was just yeah. building and building and building and if you hadn't have took the time to say yo let me just jump out of this truck before something tragic happened uh, what, at one point in the video, you, you, you mentioned that, you know, when you went outside, you, you, you got accosted a lot, you know, by, you know, by strangers that was just not, you know, that was just not, uh, you know, doing good things. What, what, what areas, uh, that, that, that yeah. happened to, I mean, that, that happened to you? Um. I'll try to remember a few, but you know, I, I was always all over it. So I could have stopped at a truck stop here in this state and they kept moving and this something happened in this state. So it, it don't, I can't really pinpoint every location, but I can remember one location for sure was Kansas. I was coming out of Colorado and I was in Kansas on my way back toward um, Northeast. And yeah, I was in Kansas and I had, you know, gotten off the highway at a stop sign to get onto the other highway. I don't remember what highway I was on. But as I got off the highway, um, a guy from a, a, tr a, a car, I'm sorry, excuse me, a car from behind me that was following me for, I don't know how many miles, I really didn't pay attention. But he had kind of um, got in front of me, like he had sped around and got in front of me. Now we're on a one-lane street and we're at a stop sign. He stops at the stop sign first. And obviously, I'm behind him. It's only us two on the road. So he gets out of his vehicle at the stop sign after after noticing that I'm a woman and I'm by myself. He gets out of his vehicle at the stop sign, and I'm thinking something's wrong. He walks up to my truck, climbs up it, hangs onto my mirror until I roll the window down, and then he just wants to say, oh, your trailer ain't trailing for shit. Some, some white guy looking like he's chewing tobacco. I'm looking like, I said, what? So he's like, your Wait, trailer stop, ain't trailer stop, for shit. Stop, 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 stop. Yeah. Bad, stop. Hold up. Mm -hmm. Hold up. Sorry for cutting you off. People say I got a bad habit in doing that, but yo, no, why the hell you, you right? Right? Why the <laughs> hell you raised down the window for? Because I didn't know what, like, I didn't really know. I thought maybe, at first I wasn't, because I'm like, what the fuck is this hillbilly looking dude doing? 
You know, I'm like, what is he doing? But then I'm like, well, maybe, it's, maybe, I don't know. I just said, well, maybe he needs some help or something. I don't know. I didn't know. So I just said, when he came, when he finally was on my, to my, on my, to my, on my truck, I was looking like, well, what, you know, what does he want? Maybe he wants, maybe I can help him in some way is what I thought. I don't know. I didn't know what the man wanted. But I thought it had to be pretty urgent for him to get out of his truck and, I mean, get out of his vehicle and come and approach mine. So I was like, well, maybe he needs to, to use my phone or something. I don't know. I didn't know what he wanted. So, yeah, I just rolled the window down, not all the way, but a little, enough enough for me to um, hear what he had to say. And, yeah, he just wanted to, it was, it was ego. It was, oh, this is a woman, and I'm a man, and she's black, and what's she doing out here? Let me bother her. It was like that. She's by herself. But I didn't know that when he approached me. It wasn't until I realized his tone and his cadence um, once he began talking and saying, oh, your trailer ain't trailing for shit. And I'm like, oh, he just wants to talk stuff. He just wants to um, bother me. He just wants to harass me. He just wants to get a reaction out of me. So once I said what, it was on register. I heard what he said, but it was like all of those things I just told you, like what I was realizing about him was registering for me. Like, oh, he's just an asshole. So then I'm like, I just said, what? And he repeated himself. So once he just, once I noticed he wanted a reaction, I just said, okay. And then I just looked at him. Now we're looking at each other. So now I look at his car, like, get the fuck off my truck before I pull off, which I couldn't anyway, because he was in my way. But yeah, that was the gist of that. So he just climbed down. Once I looked at his car, like we're in the middle of the street and you climbed up on my fucking truck, the nerve, the call Cassidy, <laughs> the call Cassidy, sir. And I just looked at him, but I didn't say that because I didn't know he had a car Cassidy. Like, how dare you? So, but you know, I don't know if this man is crazy enough to climb, come climb up on my truck. I don't know what he got. I don't know if he, you know what I'm saying? He could have a gun on him. He's reaching his back pocket. I don't know what he got going on. So I didn't say, I was cautious with my tongue. And I just said, okay. And I looked at him and he said it again. And I said, okay. And then I looked at his car, like, move out the fucking way. And I looked back at him, and he got the hint. And he climbed down, and he moseyed his fucking way on. But that was just one incident. Like, I, But it bothered me. It bothered me for hours after I, after he left as I'm driving. Because it just, like I said, the nerve is, is me knowing that if I had a man in this truck, he would have never came and did that. If, there, if you seen a man driving this truck, he would have never came and did that. So that's why it bothered me so. Like, what makes you think that you can come and approach me? Do you think that I'm beneath you? Do you think that because you're a white male and I'm a black woman that there's some type of inferiority that you have over me? So it, it, it bothered me. It would be things like that. Or I know that I'm attractive, and I don't remember what state I was in this particular time, but I was going to the restroom. These are some story times I was going to put on my channel, so I'm giving you the tea right now. <laughs> But well, before, be, before you give me before you give me the second T, man, the, the 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 first T is bothersome to me because yeah, number num, exactly. number one, I number one, I I wish you never rose down the window. You know, you you you. I mean, you see somebody, you you see somebody strange. That's red flags. Getting on the two lane, on the two lane, and it's just uh -huh. y'all. You know that it's already red flags if the if the car is not moving and all like that. Then he gets out the car. That's the second red flag. Yeah, you know you come. He, he walks it's down, out. come over to your truck, get up on your, you know, get up on your door and all like that. I mean, dude is exhibiting exhibiting creep red flag vibes all the way. Oh, I mean, all the way too. Yeah. And then, like I said, my, I my thing, I my thing with you, no, nah, man, know. you don't do that. You don't do that. You in the middle of nowhere. Okay. This, you ain't no telling what that dude would have did. That dude probably would have would have hemmed you up, kidnapped you, drove, you know, had you tied up in the back while driving your truck, you know, drive you over to, you know, drive you over to a field or something like that, had his way with you. And then probably, you know, un unalived you and, and, and left you somewhere. 
you know, that's scary right there, man. You don't don't do that. Don't know, AC. Don't. Yeah, I mean, it's done now. It's yeah, I know done it's now. done. This I know it's done now, but don't. Ago. I know it's done now, but don't do don't don't let it happen again, man. Somebody stops in front of you and and all like that, and 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 it looks like that they about to get out the car. Either you do one or two things. If it ain't no car behind you, you put that motherfucker in reverse and be like. Shit. And if it is some cars behind you, look, y'all got deer guards. You put that bad boy in drive. Hey, move out. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how we do that. Uh, wow. That's ooh, I'm I'm glad nothing uh nothing happened to you. I'm you know, good that he took his happy behind back over to the car and went on about his business, but that that's how people get hurt. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You yeah, hey, you you yeah. come walking up to this lady. I mean, on the flip side of that, you come walking up to this lady's truck. Ain't no telling. She probably could have had a machete. Could have had your ass. You know, but he didn't know. I could right. have had a man in the back. It right. Crazy you... nigga in the back with a <laughs> Right. You know, he just walked right up. Right. Like, Whew. Uh, I'm glad. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad. I, I, I guess I just like I said. I assume the only way a person would do that is the only way I would get out of my car and approach a truck is if I needed help. So I just assume like, okay, well maybe it's something he needs. Maybe he, maybe he needs. He's in the middle of nowhere. Maybe he needs some help. Or I don't know. Maybe he's lost. I didn't really know what to think. That doesn't happen. Like that never really happens. But. Yeah, it's never happened to me again because I ain't, you know, I ain't crazy. Yeah, learn, learn, because, learn hey. from that. Learn from that. Learn from that. Yeah, All right. Sure. Uh, the, the the you you had another story time for us. What what, what happened? What what happened on this one? This one was well, it's a, it's a, it's a few of them, but I'm gonna just give you this one. It wasn't any type of um, verbal communication or any type of approach, really. It's just more so a observation. I was on my way to the shower, and I um, so I had my little bag and everything with me, and I noticed the man following me. Well, he was, I mean, there's plenty of people going into the truck stop, so I couldn't, I couldn't say that he followed me. But I noticed the guy um, behind, kind of behind me to the side, like in my peripheral, and I'm walking. Now I'm inside. I walked across the parking lot. Now I'm inside. And I noticed he's still looking. Like I can kind of see him from, I'm not staring at him, but I can see him from the side of my peripheral vision that he's still like looking toward me, my direction. So I go in um, to the truck stop. And I'm walking through to find the shower room. I already ordered my shower online, so I know exactly which one I'm going in. So he's a little distance behind me. By the time I turn the corner, I'm thinking, okay, great. He, maybe he just was attracted and, you know, he just, he, realized I was going to the shower. Well, no. So I'm punching my number in on the keys and here he comes around the corner. And I'm like, he don't have a shower bag or nothing. But he comes around the corner as if he did, like he wants to follow me in. But then I look like we're now we blocking eyes and he's realizing, oh shit, she she sees me and she's about to get in the shower. Let me hurry up and turn around. But yeah, that was the one time that I was pretty much like followed to the shower room. But yeah, it, it, it that there was no like I said, no verbal nothing. But it got to the point where I wouldn't shower at night. I wouldn't go to the bathroom at night. I had a toilet on my truck. The night, yeah, I absolutely needed to, which was just to be pump to pump gas. And it, and at that point, it would be fine because you know it's kind of lit up and I'm right by the tank, so there's nowhere I have to walk. And I don't have to actually go into the store for the receipt. Most of the time, I get my receipt on my phone or my email. So, yeah, it's just I had to be really super cautious. Um, times that I've been cursed out. Like, it's just, yeah, but hey, all of those things were exhausting. But like I said, the last straw was in trying to control how I, how I would drive. I'm like, I'm already... Um, I feel sacrificing and giving up so much to be um, in this position to do this and to and to drive this company for y'all. For you to tell me you're concerned about my ability to haul freight with Prime, I feel like that was insulting because I always deliver my freight. I've never had an accident. I always get there. Some 
90 percent of the time i'm on time so there's no reason for you to be concerned if i haven't got a ticket accident i always get your freight where it's supposed to be throughout the united states so don't don't get hit with me so that was kind of like the last straw like i'm already putting up with so much i don't need this here either i got I, Excuse me, I got my three years experience, so <laughs> I can take it and go elsewhere. Damn good coffee. And hot. Man, that's that's woo. Ooh, three year, three three years of trucking. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of things that you uh, went through. I mean, this. You know, going through this, uh, going through this trucking journey was 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 kind of difficult. Uh, we we hear the difficulties and everything. Uh, you you mentioned something about finance uh, financially. Now, being that you was a lease driver with Prime, uh, we we talked we touched on that at one point before um, you decided to go. Uh, lease instead of you know just being a company driver because you know you you felt financially it was much more financially profitable than going as a as a as a um as a company driver but uh you know since the pandemic you know the freights and everything uh Again, you touched on uh, on finances. So how how was your finance being the lease driver in the beginning, and how did it, all this all this affect you now or up until you left? Um. Yes, in the beginning, it was appeared to be more profitable, especially with um other couple other YouTuber trust IRAs that I knew that were doing it. Um, that's really when I got into it. They were showing me pictures of their uh -huh. checks and they're making two grand, three grand a week. And I'm like, the company driver, you're not going to make that much. You know, they're making 800 to maybe 1200 a week. So at first it was very, um, it was like an eye candy. So yeah, I jumped right into that. And the first six months, I think I made a hundred grand. Um, but it wasn't take home. So after every, after, after that six months, after, um, taxes and everything, if I can remember correctly. Yeah, after grow, after my expenses and everything like that, I think I only, I want to look at the numbers. But I want to say I only ended up making all my taxes over um, maybe like 40 and 47,000. So half of that went on expenses. So that was in six months. So I was like, okay, you know, not, not bad. So I went for it and continued the next year. And okay, okay, okay. the next year I ended up making two hundred thousand on paper. And then after the expenses and everything, I took home sixty seven thousand. And that's when I was like, Okay, you know, after the sixty seven thousand I had to pay fourteen thousand in taxes. So what's sixty seven minus fourteen? About, fi about 60, fifty and some change. A A C yeah, A so, A C. You yeah. you said you cleared two hundred thousand though, and yeah. After and after after every, uh, after <laughs> is and all, this is every, this is everything before taxes and your personal stuff. You only took home. Yeah. You only took home five. What's that? Zero 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 five figures. Sixty-seven grand. Yep. Yep. After, minus taxes is four minus fourteen. After that, you gotta take the sixty-seven minus the fourteen thousand. Okay, so this is so 14, I took home only 50, 50, 50, 50, 14, 7, 50 about fifty-three. Yep, fifty-three thousand. Jesus. The next year, sure was. Out of two hundred yep. grand, and that's when. Yep. I'm talking about a thousand a month for that truck, fuel, every, yeah, all of it. Yep, I got the statement too to this day, and I and and I'll say to this day, that's when I realized it wasn't as lucrative as it appeared. Because yeah, some weeks you could make three grand, some weeks you could make two grand. However, 
when it all boils down and you average that thing out at the end of the year and you pay it all expenses and at the end of the year, and mind you, you living on your truck to get three grand. You living on your truck. If you take a couple of days off, you're not going to see that type of money. You barely might not even see any money if you take some time off that week because your, your expenses are high. So, yeah, that's when I started realizing, oh, no, nah, this ain't what it's cut out to be. This is, this is not, you know, the money could, you could, you could get the money quick, but if you ain't paying your taxes, which I wasn't, if you ain't paying your taxes, um, it looks like you're getting some money. It looks like you do, you're still doing good, but at the end of the year, really not. So that's when I realized, again, it's not as lucrative as it appears. So yeah, that's where I'm at now. I still owe taxes and I just, financially I'm still I pay my taxes every month. I pay a, a monthly um what is it a I'm on a payment plan with the IRS, I'll say that. Wow. A C I'm I'm all right, so let's so just give me a quick synopsis right quick. So you you get a settlement at the end of the at the at the end of the week. Let's say you get a three thousand mm-hmm. dollar settlement. At the end of the week, that's that's three thousand uh, dollars to start, and then break down the expenses all the way down to where your where your net would come into play. So three thousand out of three thousand, what you had to do? What what was all taken out of that three thousand dollars? We using three thousand dollars as a ballpark. Okay, if you only if I only made three thousand dollars for that week. I'm probably not going to see much of shit because that's a very low growth. In order for me to take home about $2,500, I would need to at least gross around seven to 8000 a week. So we'll start at three since that's the number you gave me. At 3000 a 1000 is your truck payment. That's right off the rip. Um, your APU, or all of your random fees, you might have gas, depending on how far I went, let's take out another thousand because you just pay gas for the whole week and not including the other little fees that you got coming. The child support that I'll pay, let's take out, let's take out that. Now let's say I'm down to about $900. Um, I, I, let me see what else will come out of that. I don't have an actual statement with me right in front. Nah, we, they always we, 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 we can use that. We, we can use that. <laughs> we can use that right there, man. Yeah. So, so nine hundred, nine hundred dollars. If you're lucky. Wow. If you're lucky, you see nine hundred dollars. Wow. Yeah. AC nine hundred dollars. That's out of three out, out of three grand. So that means you actually got to. You you gotta run beyond hard in order to in order to see a good settlement with 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 Lisa Nor yep. with Prime. Um, AC, yep. I, I, I just want to ask your opinion right quick because there are there you you mentioned other YouTubers and all like that, and there are YouTubers. I, I to be honest with you, I haven't seen uh much of them as of late. But there were YouTubers in the past that was coming on saying that they was being successful with with leasing. Like, I mean, would would you over here saying that you gotta like run beyond hard in order to get like three thousand or uh, get like seven thousand or or six thousand dollar settlements? I mean, uh, are are they telling the truth about what they what they actually making over there? considering what you making because i know your money is not their money and you know their situation probably might be different but i mean it's- um, i'd say i'd say it's, it's possible to probably take home around 70 grand to 80 grand if you are pretty practically living on your truck at prime and you have a ta- a, a dependent addition that like I don't I'm not no tax advisor I'm saying I didn't even have my son to you know, you know how when you claim somebody you get more back or you basically wouldn't have to pay as much. So there's people who have two or three kids or you know one or two kids that they probably could put on there. If you got help with your taxes, 
if you decided to pay your taxes quarterly, um, like I wasn't doing that. So if you decided to pay your taxes quarterly and you had dependents that you could use to help you on your taxes, or maybe you go, you married and y'all, you and your wife, I don't know that situation. That marriage is a whole different thing on the taxes. But for me, a single person without claiming a dependent who was not paying taxes quarterly, who was living on the truck, um, for me, it was difficult. And I don't believe 67 minus 14 grand. So I don't believe $50,000 was worth me staying for three years. I would say if I, if I was to do it again, I probably would have gave it maybe, I, I still could have gave it a year and a half. I probably would have still gave it a year and a half. The experience is irreplaceable. I still, I still had a lot of fun. I still was able to learn about um, before I could make it that much time. I was an Uber driver, and my salary before that year was eight thousand dollars for the year. So for me, hearing that I could make two to three grand a week was a huge upgrade. Hearing that I could bring home a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand a year, I thought I was never going to have to need for money again. But see, you go into it and you don't know no better. Now I'm on the other side of that and I know a little better. What I do least and again, I'm not sure. I think, yeah, if I had to do it all over again, I mean, so if I had to do it over again, the only thing I really would change, I would still do least and I, I wouldn't have, I blown a lot of money and still had to pay taxes on that money. So I would have saved and not blew through the money. And I would have um, paid my taxes quarterly um, if I could do it different. That's probably the only thing I would do. If I could do it again, um, I think I would. I would give. I'm not closed off to it, but not with Prime. And I probably would try to figure out if I can get like a different type of lease payment. I don't know, but right now I'm I'm sticking with the company side of things. So. Um, in the future, maybe if my son, be, when my son becomes an adult, I would probably go back to it as long as I can pay my quarterly. And like living, living on the road, I don't know if I would do that necessarily. Maybe I have to find something where I'm out four days, home three days, something like that. Or I'm, I'm kind of open to whatever, but I don't, right now I'm kind of turned off by um, OTR leasing. All right. So who's to say that would stay that way? Now you did you you. Now I want to touch on the fact that you mentioned about uh, paying child support. I want to touch on that for a little bit, but before I touch on that, uh, do you think, uh, do you think now that you got your experience with leasing with a with a mega carrier, uh, you you already said that you don't think that you're gonna ever go back and lease with a mega carrier. But if somebody come and ask you, like, you know, ask you for your advice or or ask you your opinion on leasing, what would that what what would your answer be about the overall leasing? Would it, would you would you kind of tell them to go lease with a mega carrier or would you try to tell them to lease with somewhere else that's tried that that would try to make their money better? I would tell them use it. It goes. To, if I, I would tell them to do that as a last resort. At least with a mega carry as a last resort. If you can't, if you can't find, try to find um, maybe a maybe a smaller carrier. I, I I can't tell you about the the smaller ones as of yet because I never leased one with a with a smaller company. But I would try to look for at least that's not as expensive. I don't even know if that's possible. But one that maybe not is a thousand, maybe one that's maybe six or seven hundred a week um, or a month. I really would advise them to do it at the at as a last resort. And if I did advise them want to do it, my advice would be to pay your taxes quarterly. And if you're going to live on the road, save all your freaking money. Don't blow it because, like I said, I never had it like that. So. That would be my advice to anyone that was going to go for it. I wouldn't completely discourage them from doing it. I would just make them aware of what's the truth, you know, that, that it's not going to be teachers and cream and you're not going to get the most money. Um, you're not always going to see three grand a week. You're not always going to see two grand a week. Some weeks you might not make nothing. Some weeks you might make 15. Some weeks you might break 500. 
some weeks you might make three, you know, so I would just, I would just give them the truth of it and let them decide and just try to give them the tips, like I said, of paying your taxes and saving the money and that would be that and get in and get out, like maybe go to a carrier that's not going to have you, um, something that where you could do a walk away lease where you don't have to be tied in, um, so whenever you decide, I don't want to do this no more, you can walk away. That would be my... Excuse me. I happen to be passing. I thought you might like some coffee. Oh, that's very nice of you. Thank you. Did any time while you was at Prime, did any time that they, they, they came and asked you and say, well, we know that you're, you know, you're a lease op and, you know, your money... Uh, is is kind of fluctuating. Uh, we can help you with that by being a trainer. Did 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 that was that opportunity open for you? And if so, uh, why you didn't take it if 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 it was open to you? I always wanted to be a trainer. That was one of my goals. There, my goal was to be to the lease and then become a trainer. However. Um, <laughs> They had me on what they call a risk, a risk list, R I S K, a risk list. <laughs> um, they said I was high risk because every so often I would get little like I had a thing like one time I um I scratched the back of my trailer. Like if you do little incidents, like if you have little incidents, little things here, little things there, then they put you on a, a risk list. If, like I said, if you call, every time they would add that to the risk list, the risk list has 200 people on it, and 200 being um, where you, I think that's where you start, no, 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 200 being your way, you're almost off the list, right? So one, two, three, all the, the, the lower in number, the higher you are on the list to have an accident. They call you a high-risk driver. So even though I never had an accident, even though I never had a speeding ticket, even though I never had anything like that, if they say that I'm speeding according to their uh, thing, if they say that, oh, you, you scratched the trailer, any little incidents that you have, it adds to you being on that risk list. So I never moved off the risk list in three years or two and a half years from the time I got on it. I never moved up. I was probably like number eight, nine, ten. I probably stayed around that area, like high risk driver. So they never. Every time I tried to become a trainer, all of the other departments they go through a process where each department has to approve. Well, every department approved, including my dispatcher, except for the safety department, which was in control of this risk list. So I went and sat down with the safety department, like, hey, why am I still on this list? I never had any issues. I'm trying to be a trainer. I'm great. I know my job. I have a whole YouTube channel. I'm helping people um, virtually. Like, why am I not able to train? And that was the reason, because I was still on that risk list for the little incident. So, yeah, I never I never had the opportunity really presented at me, but I tried several times to get into it. And what I will say is, once you become a trainer, if you have little dings or if you have, um, you know, where the word prime will consider you speeding and stuff like that. Like I had a trainer who got pulled over for his cell phone and he still was able to stay a trainer. People that, um, I had a trainer that ran into a trash can. He still was able to be a trainer. I had a trainer that knocked the door off. I knocked the door off once. He still was able to be a trainer. So they don't revoke it from you once you become a trainer. But if you're, if you're not a trainer yet and you're trying to get there, it's like they want you to be practically perfect. Like no, know anything no mishaps at all before they put you down as a train now that you're uh not with prime no more would you still say that prime is a good company to go uh drive for to get the cdls from for uh for new oh, people yeah 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 prime is real good for you to start i wouldn't take that back i wouldn't take that back that's where i got my start at it's very comfortable as far as the, uh, the atmosphere, the energy, the people get in, get out. It's very professional. Well, for the most part, um, for the most part, it's very professional. Um, it's a it's a safe place for you to be and do what you got to do. Now, you got to use discernment when you picking a trainer. 
But however, everything else is a go. It's, they're going to teach you. They're going to get you in. They're going to get you in a truck. You're going to get your CDL journey started. Yeah, for sure. I would say any new person that wants to um, start out and get their CDL, that, that's, a, that's a double yeah. All that's right. a double yeah for me. All right. Yeah. All right, AC. So, uh, man, so you, how, how old is your... How old is your son? Um, he'll be thirteen in June. Thirteen in June. All right, that's what's up with that. You, you touched on uh, that you that you getting hit with uh, child support. I this uh, you know I I I know that women could get hit with child support, but this is so very 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 slim and rare what uh, if you if you if you want what happened uh that 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 got you on child i mean child support with your son i mean usually it's the the father but did the father go out and be like Yo, I'm about to hit you with child support. Like, what? I mean, yeah. There's what? just like there is, just like there is, uh, um, Lady. spiteful women, huh? Oh no, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I'm yeah. Listening. yeah, yeah. Just like there is spiteful, spiteful, spiteful women and bitter women. There are spiteful men, and there's and there's bitter men as well. So it, it works both ways. It's not just, um, it's not a one way street when it comes to that. So basically I'm, I have a video on my channel of when I was served with the paperwork <laughs> and um, for court and such. But basically I'll just say this, my, my son's father put me on child support because he wanted to, he didn't need the money. He doesn't need the money. He's, He's a plumber by trade and he's doing just fine. He has two sources of income. He's married. So he's he doesn't need my money. But he chose to um do that. That's just I'm gonna just keep it all the way real. But when my son um the year that I let my son go live with him, uh I had already had him half the year or just over half the year. Well at the end of that year when I put um I let him go live with him. Like I had him all his life up until that time. Well, my son father wanted to claim him. And I'm like, I've had him the whole time. You just now got him. You only had him just, you know, under six months. So no, I'm not going to let you claim him this year, especially because I only made $8,000 as an Uber driver and I needed help. Um, so yeah, so he got, he was upset about that. And the following month he went and put me on child support. So it was spiteful. It was because he could, it was because I let I finally let um, my son go live with him. Not finally, because I encouraged him. I'm the one who, who said, hey, I think you should take him for a while. But, you know, people, when they feel like they're in a position of power and they can do anything to play on that, there are some people who will do that. It doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman. So in this case, you just have a person who it just happens to be the opposite sex that's acting typically the way a female would act and another reason why females don't don't men don't typically put women on child support not only because you know they probably don't think they could but the men who can who can and know they can they're real they're just men they're real men if anytime i say that you know anytime i'm i mention of my my being on child support any man that's around me says what kind of what kind of man will put you on child support? Every, every, it never fails. That's the answer. That's the response that I typically get. What type of man will put you on child support? What's it? You know, they don't even. So, hey, I think that speaks more about him and, and how he feels. But at the end of the day, I'm not upset about it. That's my child. And hey, not only will you, not only do I pay child support, I'll pay whatever else my son needs. <laughs> Even though I might, even if I'm struggling, even if I'm in a transition, no matter what it is that my son needs, I send him allowance. I still buy him things and send him up there. So, and child support, that's not that. It's not. It ain't no pain. It ain't no pain in my ass. 
I knew that it was done. It was done to try to hurt me, but it doesn't hurt, so I'm good. All right, so I got two fold question. Uh, the first, yeah. the first fold is when you ask the father to, you know, the, you know, to take your, to take your son in. You did that because you was going into trucking, right? Well, initially, I didn't know I was going into trucking. I did that because I was at the time living in Georgia, and I was an Uber driver. I was also in school for music production. And I took it up a new job where I was working from home. So I was trying to work three jobs as a single mom. Like I said, my father, my son's father wasn't really in his life um, very much. And um, I had only made $8,000 that year, it's despite it all, because I had to, um, my son at the time was eight. I couldn't leave him by himself. I would have to be there when he came out of school. You know, I had to be a mom. So I couldn't work 10 hours a day. I had to go take care of him doing that. Um, I wasn't able to work as much as I needed to keep a roof over our heads to pay my rent and everything else. So I was in the process of getting addicted. I was literally struggling, struggling. And on top of it, there will be times where I would have to wait for my son to fall asleep and go try to do Uber while he's sleeping and be back home before he wakes up. Um, my son's father pretty much got a hold of that. And he called the school and basically snitched on me and said, hey, she she works sometimes while he's sleeping to try to get them to call CPS on me. So yeah, it, it, like I said, it was, instead of them helping and pitching in or trying to um, help out, I, I just, I think I've told you that he's pretty spiteful. He would do things um, to spite me versus trying to help me. So. Wow. Um, where, where did the, where, where did, what, what, oh, man, where, yeah, where, where did it, to, to, where, to have him. Where Plus did he it, was, let me say this, he also was in the process, he, he also was having another child, and he hadn't been taking care of the one he had, so I wasn't going for that either. Damn, where did the bitterness between y'all two came into play, man? That's crazy. I, I would imagine, <laughs> I would imagine the father, you know, seeing your struggles and everything and seeing the, and and seeing what you're trying to do to, you know, to, 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 to take care of your family I mean, it, I, I, that's I mean, more competitive. He's wow. more competitive than supportive. He's more competitive, and so he's always trying to compete with me. If I, if he, he's the type of person wants to, that I feel wants to always wanted to keep a foot on my neck. So like, oh, if she's doing good, let me, I could do better. Oh, she's doing this, I could do that. Like it, he always try to like one up me or like um, not want me to do better than him. It was more of it was more of after we um, after we moved on from each other. It was more of oh him trying to compete with me, um, whether I knew it or not. So that's what that's where that came from. It wasn't um uh, it was never like a supportive thing. It was more so like oh I gotta one up her or try to keep my foot on her neck. Man, I'm sorry to hear all of that, man. That's 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 crazy. But it sounds like. Like you said, you know, there's spiteful women and spiteful men. I mean, he's he's doing what the modern woman does. Like, wow. Hey. All right, so hey. so you're you're on child support. Um being the truck driver, uh I, I just got finished watching uh a video, a case study on uh on a man uh that was going through it you know, with his baby's mama in child support. He was telling the court that, you know, with child support, uh, they 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 was killing him. I mean, dude was saying that he was coming home with with sixty dollar checks. Like he he was asking the judge, like, how you know, how am I gonna maintain if you if you keep hitting that? And the judge was mm -hmm. like, the judge came and said, um, he said, uh, yo, if you let uh if you let the government, you're 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 if you let the government take care of your situation, you're at the mercy of the government. So with that said, uh, how how did that affect you with you know with your money? Now I know you you know you're in trucking, you're making a lot of money. Did they did they come to you and say, 
hey, you know, we see you making a lot of money. We we're gonna have to start taking this that amount out of you, or did they just, or they just took continue taking the amount that they've been taking from you before you got in the truck? Oh, coffee. He's here. Well, let me, I'm going to just keep it real with you. That's why I never, you never seen on my channel. And I'm telling you this on your channel, all this stuff, it's not on my channel. <laughs> but um, because my channel is watched by people that know my son's father. So I have to be right. careful about what I put out on my channel. Right. But that's why I put enough to um, put money, I, what I made and all of that stuff. Now that I'm not working that job anymore, I can go and tell people how much I made, how much I made weekly, what you know, all of this money stuff about being a lease driver. I can go on there now and and tell what I made. But at the time, I wouldn't do that because I didn't want him going back and saying, "Oh, well, I'm gonna try to go get more money out of her because it looks like she's making more" or something like that. So my situation. Um, um, in the beginning, when I was in training, when I was in training with Prime, I was only making 700 a week. He put me on child support while I was in training. So he was getting, he was only able to take from 700 a week. So basically, uh, that was, that was what that was. So now I'm not sure about the case that you heard online. That man probably had multiple kids and he probably, I don't know, he probably had multiple kids. Am I right? I, I'm not sure. They, it was just a baby mom, yeah, and I think they was just talking about the one kid. I'm I'm not sure, but yeah, because in that particular it, case, well, it was just him and her. Well, I know that legally they only take 17% for one child, so you can't possibly break me taking 17% of my check. Okay. That's, you get what I'm saying? Right. That's right. the max they can take for one child is 17%. So what's seventeen percent of seven hundred dollars? You can't possibly break me by taking that. Right. And this is my child, so I would look at it like that. But but there's some people, you know, I'll, I'll just say he wasn't happy about having to pay child support when he had to pay it to me, and it was not even as much as I'm paying to him. And hey, I wouldn't have. The thing is with me, I wouldn't have had to put him on child support if he would have been helping me out. That's the difference between me and him. So I I don't want to turn this into like a, a bashing of no 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 know, no 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 it, 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 like no no it's not <laughs> it's not that and we're definitely not gonna we're definitely not gonna do that. I mean it's oh, at the end of the day like I'm crazy. grateful it was, that it was crazy, but yeah. still you know he's you know he, your your son is still able to. You know, be with his father. You know, despite yeah. despite the spitefulness. You know, it's 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 all about the kids. Yeah. You know, that's that's what yeah, it's all about. So that, yeah, that's what I try to tell. Him. I just try to give myself a reset sometimes when these type of things come up, and just remember of the things I'm grateful that he's there, that he's safe, that he's with. You know, a, a black man needs his black father. That's period, Facts. especially in this society. So I try to be grateful that my son is safe, that he's with his dad, that they have a he's married, regardless of me, regardless of how we all feel about each other. It's a two parent household. He has a he has a sister now and I guess a sister on the way. So gratefully, they have a nice family to support. And he has, you know, I'm just happy that he's there and he's safe and he's supported and he's loved. And I'm able to still do what I'm doing. Because if it wasn't for that situation, I wouldn't be able to, to be trucking, period. I wouldn't have been able to live on the road. So, hey, child support, if that's what you want, take it. You know what I'm saying? If that makes you sleep better at night, have it. If that, you know, it, it is what it is. Because I'm still out here getting my experience, getting my knowledge, getting what I'm doing, making YouTube videos, talking to you, doing interviews. I'm still doing my thing. And thanks Thanks to that situation and to myself for even um, releasing my son to let him go to his father. What, what What's your relationship between you and your son now? I mean, is it still great? Oh, he loves me. Yeah, he loves us. He loves He's a mama's boy. He, he, he would rather be here. He would rather be wherever I'm at. But right now, it's just... Um, I'm still he, trying to get all my ducks in a row. He understands. Uh, he understands what 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 it is to take for you to get yourself together. 
Yeah, he he definitely does. And I think he's he's gotten used to being where he is, but he's still he's still at the drop of a dime. If I say it's time, he will be elated to come That's and be with me whenever I'm ready. Well, AC yeah. the mogul. Um you uh the last time we talked, uh you um well let me let me ask you this. Uh what 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 is up with AC the mogul now? I mean, it, it, you know, do you have uh anybody in your life right now? Um is there <laughs> is there a future? Is 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 there a future Mr. Mogul in the future? What's what's <laughs> what it is now? What was how, how how's your life going right yeah. now? Yeah, he's in a future Mr. Mogul. <laughs> I got to take that one. Well, <laughs> yes, I am in love. <laughs> I am in love. I am in a relationship. And it's been a year now. Um, I have someone who I believe loves me and cherishes me and cares about how I feel and respects me, who is not in competition with me, who will support me whether I'm on the road or not. And in this in this world out here, it's really hard to find actual love. Not somebody is just trying to use you for what you have and what you can do. That's definitely not not this person. So I'm just grateful to be able to have this experience because, shoot, at the end of the day, I've been through a lot with love. You know, a lot with love and a lot and a lot of heartbreak. So I'm just grateful to be able to, to receive it now and, and sometimes just receiving love is like the hardest thing a person can do and you would think it's easy but sometimes it, it's really hard to do so but yeah I have someone who's who's here who's here sticking things out and in my corner and hopefully it stays that way all right Mr. Mogo <laughs> that's good all right bro <laughs> All right, bro. This, you, you, you got a winner right here, man. Make sure you treat her right. Is is he uh is is he a truck driver as well? Or or how no, how did y'all meet? No. <laughs> no, he's not. He's not a truck driver. He um he didn't know the first thing. He didn't know the first thing about this truck. He barely knew how to get up here and get in it. But <laughs> but um you know he works he works as a, at a veterinary hospital and he um i met him 17 18 years ago in job corps but we never like spoke or anything like we never like had a conversation but we just kind of kept it via social media the entire time and here we are now that's what's up that's what's <laughs> up man ac the mogul thank you very much for sharing your time with me man uh very Thank you I, for having me. You welcome. You welcome. I enjoyed myself. Awesome <laughs> conversation as as always. As always. Uh go ahead and uh shout out, you know, usually I would have you to do it in the beginning, but uh go ahead and shout out where the people can find you and your music. All right, bet. Yeah, it's been a while. I'm working on some new stuff. Just be patient with me because this is a real person living a real life. But yeah, you can check out my music on any major platform, iTunes, Apple Music, iHeartRadio, uh, any any music platform. You can go right on your phone, YouTube, and stream it. And the name is Adrian Sherell. That's what AC stands for. And you can find me at AC the Mogul on YouTube. Links you can click on and you can get right to my music on there as well. So. Thanks, thanks for rocking with me. And for the few people that do listen to me, I see y'all still streaming me. I really appreciate that. And no the people doubt. that's being patient with me. No Thank doubt. you for that, too. You welcome. You welcome. The run, the boat, the back of tequila. I mix it all up and I swear that I need none of them. I have pocket if it ain't about the wallet. None of them. My mind is it ain't about the time. None of them. My wrist if it ain't about the time. No ways. None of them. Nah, we gon' be fine. Hey, there's so many battles. So my left and my right. Hey, take a shot for all of your pride.